G'day guys, Pete here. Thanks for tuning into my channel. Today we have an interesting ration. This is a Russian made humanitarian daily ration for the people of Afghanistan. There's some debate around if it is a legit ration or not. Let's open it and find out. Okay, let's get into it. All right, let's take a closer look at the packaging. As you can see, it comes packaged in a cardboard box, then it's wrapped in brown paper, then it's loosely shrink wrapped. This ration is no way water resistant. However, other Russian civilian rations have similar packaging. There is a paper content sheet with both English and another language which Google Translate cannot clearly decipher. This ration was purchased off eBay from a long time highly rated seller and I'll put the link below in the description if you want to buy one for yourself. It cost me with shipping to Australia $40.70 USD. This ration weighs 1.7 kilograms and it was stopped by Australian Customs for inspection by biosecurity control and then it was shipped to me with no contents removed. There is some debate amongst the ration community regarding the legitimacy of this ration. Looking at the poor packaging and the way the content sheet is designed with English first rather than the local language, is this ration just a fake to make money or is it a legit ration made for the Afghan civilian people? Without further delay, let's open it and review this ration and decide. All right, you can see on the bottom here where Australian Customs have opened this ration for inspection. So this will be our point of entry. There is actually something on the outside of the carton and that is the date of manufacture, the 1st of November 2021 and the best before or used by which is the 1st of November 2023. So it has a two year shelf life. All right, let's have a look. And first up we have two packets of Russian tea. We have a vacuum sealed package of dates. We have a fairly flimsy fork and spoon. We have a Nescafe 3-in-1 Classic. We have a packet of gum. We have two packets here of crisp bread. We have a small fruit juice and it looks like it's uh, apple cherry. There's the straw. We have three sugars. We have two coffee creamers. We have salt and pepper. We have a package of sesame candied peanuts. And next up we have one of our mains. This will be the chicken breasts in tomato sauce. 250 grams served there, nice gusseted base. And as you can see on there, it has a date of manufacture, which is the 3rd of July, 2021. And we have another main, and this will be a uh, soup with beef. And we have one more sugar, that makes four. Comparing what we received to the content sheet, there are some differences. First up, we're missing our uh, processed cheese. We're also missing the knife and the napkins as well. But added in is a package of dates and also some gum. Now was the date substituted for the processed cheese or was the cheese taken by customs? I guess we'll never know. And that is the entire contents there of the Russian humanitarian daily ration. 
Okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna break this down into three meals, breakfast, lunch, and a dinner. There's not a lot in this ration at all, but this is what we've selected to have for breakfast. We're gonna have the dates, the crisp bread, and the coffee three in one. Starting with the coffee three in one, you can see that it is a Nescafe branded three in one. Now this looks like it's a standard commercial product. Next up, let's have a look at our crackers. Now it is a 150 gram package, but it does look like it is another commercial product. It does state there that it is original. Let's see if we can figure out what type. There you go, it's a whole grain. Uh, all right, we'll get that open. All right, we'll just get out a few of those. And next up, we'll open up our dates. Now this is a fairly large vacuum sealed bag. There is no tear notch that I can see. All right, first up, let's try our Nescafe three in one. Yeah, that's really mild. It's not strong in coffee flavor. I don't normally go for the three in ones because they're generally too sweet for my liking, but you know what? This one isn't too bad. And next up, we'll try our crackers. Have a look at these things, look like little pieces of cardboard, fairly thin, uh, we'll have a bit of a smell of those. Yeah, they've got a lovely smell. They smell like whole grains and a little bit malty. Anyway, we'll give it a try. Yeah, look, they're pretty dry and they're also pretty bland. The only flavor that sort of comes through is almost like a malt flavor. Yeah, they kind of remind me a little bit of those Rye Vita crisp breads, except they're a lot lighter and they're almost like they're a puffed crisp bread. Yeah, you do get a huge 150 gram serve of these crackers. Now, if you had your processed cheese, at least you could eat them with something. But as it stands, uh, all we can do is just sort of eat them on their own. All right, we'll just wash that down with a little bit more of our Nescafe 3-in-1. And finally, that brings us to our dates. Uh, you get quite a large serve there of the dates. Let's give you a bit of a close up of that. All right, we'll give that a try. Yeah, they're a beautiful date indeed. However, they do have their seeds or pips inside, so be careful of those. Yeah, try another one. All right, well that's it for breakfast. Here we have our crisp bread. Missing was the processed cheese. Had we had that, those two would have went together perfectly. Here we have our dates, they were lovely. Just be warned about the pips. And we have our Nescafe three in one, that was lovely. All right, we'll take this over to lunch. And this is gonna be the selection for lunch. We have leftover crisp bread from breakfast. We have our soup with beef or Sherpa. We have our sesame candied peanuts and we have our tea with whitener. And starting with our tea, uh, it is branded Princess Nuri and the tea flavor is Magic Bergamon. All right, we'll just let that steep for a little while. And next up, we'll get open our sesame candy peanuts. Now this is the first component that looks like it is a non-commercial product. We've had our Sherpa, which is our soup with beef boiling for 10 minutes, so it's nice and hot. Look at that. Nice tomato fragrance coming through. All right, we'll just add our whitener to our tea.
All right, first up, let's try uh, Princess Nuri Bergamon Tea. Yeah, look, that's a lovely bergamot tea. That is a really strong flavor of bergamot. Uh, the whitener hasn't really done anything but sort of muddy the water there. Uh, you can't really taste any creaminess to that at all. And next up, we'll try our sesame candied peanuts. I'll get a few of those for you. Now, this was a 200 gram serve there of sesame candied peanuts. They look lovely. We'll give them a go. Yeah, look, the sesame and the peanut are a great combination and you have a nice sweet caramel flavor as well. Now you get 200 grams of sesame candied peanuts, so I imagine you'll be eating these all day. And finally, that brings us to our main, which is our soup with beef or Sherpa. Let's have a look and see what we can see. We have a nice tomato sauce. We have some cubed uh, potato pieces. We have some capsicum. And for a 300 gram main, that's not a lot of meat. It looks like there's probably about 20 grams of meat. Anyway, let's try the sauce first. With a little sesame seed in there, just for good luck. Yeah, look, that's a rich tomato sauce. It's very oily as well. I don't know if you can sort of see that uh, by looking at it, but it is a real greasy sort of oily flavor that comes through. Let's see if we can get some of those potatoes. Give it a closer look at that. Yeah, look, the potatoes are nice and firm. Nice potato flavor. Look, there's a heap of them there. Give you a bit of a look at that. Yeah, look, those potatoes have a nice consistency indeed. All right, let's try some of our beef. Now, we don't have a lot of it, so I'm hoping that this is gonna be pretty good. Have a bit of a close up at that. All right, we'll give that a try. Yeah, that meat is really tender. That's probably the best part of this main for sure. It has a great beef flavor and it just melts in your mouth. That's lovely. All right, let's see if we can get a spoonful of everything. There you go. Yeah, look, this is a great main. I really do enjoy these rustic sort of Russian mains. They remind me of home cooked meals. Right, there's that final piece of beef. Yeah, that is beautiful. We have some of our crisp bread, so we'll just break that up and drop that into our soup. Let's mix that in a little bit. There we go, we'll give that a try. Yeah, look, that's nice. It doesn't really add anything to the flavor but it gives it a nice crunchy consistency. All right, well, that's gonna be it for lunch. We had our crisp bread, which we mixed in with our soup. That gave it a nice consistency, so that was really nice. We had our sesame candy peanuts. They were beautiful, and you have a huge serve there, so I imagine you'll be eating them all day. And then we had our main, which was our soup with beef or Sherpa. Obviously, we were on a bit of a beef ration because there was not a lot of beef in that soup at all. The flavor, of the sauce was really nice. The potatoes, the carrots, and the potato had a great consistency. And then we had a bergamot tea. You know what, that wasn't too bad. All right, we'll take this over to dinner. And this is what we'll be having for dinner. We have more leftover crisp bread. We have our apple cherry fruit drink. We have our chicken breasts in tomato sauce and we have our mint gum. Now we'll start off here with our apple cherry fruit drink. Let's give you a bit of a close up look at that. Now it did have a straw glued to the side here. Obviously you would drink that out of the carton itself, but we're gonna be sort of empty it into a cup so you can have a look. And we've had our main here, which is our chicken breasts in tomato sauce. We've had that boiling in a pot for 10 minutes, so it's nice and hot. There we go, have a bit of a look at that. Smells good. And again, looking very oily. 
Whoa, lots of chicken this time. All right, we'll start off with our apple cherry drink. Yeah, that is a really strong cherry flavored drink. You do get a little bit of apple coming through, but the uh, predominant flavor there is cherry. Yeah, that is a really nice drink, but it is fairly sweet. I feel I could even water that down and it'll still be enjoyable. All right, next up, let's have a look at our main, which is our chicken breasts in tomato sauce. Now you get a fair bit of chicken there, which is nice. And then we have a tomato sauce. Uh, inside that tomato sauce, we have some onion, we have some carrots and tomato, uh, black pepper, and obviously the chicken itself. All right, we'll just try that sauce just first on its own. Very greasy as well, like the other one was. We'll give that a try. Yeah, that's a really nice flavor. And you do get that cracked pepper flavor coming through as well. Let's try a little bit there with some chicken. Yeah, look, that is really tender, that chicken. It doesn't have a lot of flavor, but the sauce itself makes up for that. There's a nice big piece of chicken there. Yeah, look, that is a lovely main indeed. Uh, that sauce has a beautiful tomato pepper flavor. Yeah, that's lovely. But it is really greasy. I don't know if you can sort of see on the surface there, there is a layer of sort of grease that's on top there. Look, most of these Russian mains are fairly greasy or fairly oily, uh, so that's to be expected. Let's go for it, look at that. Lovely. There you go. See a bit of a cross section there of the chicken. Now the chicken is really nice, however it is a little bit dry. Um, but um, yeah, that sauce really makes up for it. Now again, like all these Russian mains, they're really tasty, really rustic food. Uh, real wholesome sort of home cooked style uh, dishes. Really nice. There you go, a bit of chicken on the uh, cracker there. And again, we'll try some of our cracker in the sauce there, just to give it some consistency. A little bit of chicken left there. All right, we'll give that a go. Yeah, again, that cracker helps give some consistency to the main. Gives a little bit of a crunch. A little bit of texture there, that's nice. And finally, that brings us to our uh, mint gum. And again, this looks like a commercial packet of mint gum that you'd probably find in any supermarket or 7-Eleven sort of store in Russia. There you go, two little bricks there. Yeah, that mint gum was beautiful. Great mint flavor indeed. All right, guys, that's it for dinner. We had our uh, crisp bread left over from breakfast and lunch. That wasn't too bad, but mixed in a main. Yeah, that was lovely. We had our apple cherry drink, real strong flavor of cherry, not so much of apple, but really nice. And then we had our main beautiful tomato sauce and huge chunks of chicken. They were nice and tender, really nice indeed. Thanks for watching this video to the end. Please do subscribe to my channel for more of these sort of videos. Okay, to the question that we asked at the start of this video, was this ration a true ration intended for use in Afghanistan for humanitarian purposes? Or is it a clone or a copy for commercial sale and profit, or a well-meaning attempt to make a HDR for use in the field? With its poor packaging and its predominantly Russian commercial components, with no translation on each component, it's hard to see that this ration could be anything but a copy or a first attempt to make a Russian version of a HDR. What are your thoughts? Please let me know in the comments below. All right, guys, cheers. Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one. See ya.